What is up humans of the cardboard? Welcome back to Just Nuts guys. Today I've got a really fun top five video for you. This time we are looking at top five underrated combo decks for the whatever you want to call it the Yu-Gi-Oh! October, November 2021 Yu-Gi-Oh! format. Um, this is a really cool one. I, I might go through this and do like the same kind of video for underrated control decks that are that are like coming up and also maybe mid-range slash like going second decks just maybe to cover all the bases there because there really is a lot of stuff that's getting a lot more interesting very, very soon. So without further ado, let's just jump into it, okay? Starting off here, oh boy, hold on, hit the wrong button. Hit the wrong button. There we go. <laughs> Starting off here, we have Infernobles coming in. By the way, keep in mind, this list is not like, oh, number five is not as strong as number one. They're not really in any particular order. So just, just keep that in mind. Now, Infernobles. Now, I want to start by saying Infernobles didn't really have anything super changed for them. I just pretty much every time I see somebody who is playing Infernobles, like, play like a uh, competitively even if it's like a more competitive locals or whatever people always seem surprised and then they get dunked on by infernobles and they're like why am i surprised why did i just forget that infernobles was like crazy like a year ago they did lose the ability to like stupidly hand rip the opponent but they can still do some hand rip stuff and they're just they're one of those combo decks that feels like the the low impact hand traps do never get the job done so yeah, they have an insane boss monster like Charles. And trust me, guys, as a control player playing against this deck, when they get to Charles with protection, it can be a real pain in the nuts to out. I promise you that. Um, so they have that going for them. They also have a main deck boss monster in Gear Freed, which is really nice for them. It gives them the uh, also another way to like play around hand traps going first if they can get him set up with the negate early. Um, he's just a phenomenal boss monster. A lot. Of, I wish a lot of decks would get more main deck boss monsters as good as he is. And then you also have the fact that the deck takes advantage of like really good um, like generic warrior support, right? You have the connector package with the dolphin, insane. That it's going to, that essentially is full combo, but also let's huge attempt to look at your opponent's hand to rip any scary hand traps, or even if you can't and there's like a nib, you at least know it's there. So you play uh, to play around the nib or play the most efficiently. So whatever their nib is going to do, it's not going to kill you at the end of the at the end of the day. So very very good. Also, this is one of those decks where all it takes is any two warriors. Boom, they've got combo. And because the deck takes advantage of ice sold plus Halk, if they go ice sold and you hand trap the ice sold, they just make Halk and they play through it. Deck is very scary. Trust me, this deck is no joke. Definitely keep it in your thoughts if you are a combo player and you're looking for something cool that's not tier one. Next up, Magic Key. This one's really interesting. Now, I don't think this one's as good as Infernoble, but I do think that, that this deck has some merit to it. Um, this one's more specifically that like, if you wanna play something fun that still can compete and it does set up some pretty good boards, now is the time. Um, a lot of their stuff is low rarity from uh, the new set and they really, really needed this set. After the first wave of support for this deck in the last core set, uh, Dawn of Majesty, it, it, the deck didn't feel like it was really accomplishing enough like it was okay, but now it really feels like the deck can take off. The boards feel really rounded out. You end on like a spell and trap negate, a monster negate, and a um, uh, kind of like a what's it like ghost ogre, but like it doesn't have, stuff has to doesn't have to be on the field. I don't think it's like it's cool. It's like the ogre, whatever, and then like and also potentially other stuff as well. So the deck definitely has some cool stuff. It takes advantage of Vanellas as well, which is always fun. The designs are really cool. The lore seems to be based off of like, um, I don't know. I don't even know what you'd call it, like that base of lore. But if you ever watched Magi, the anime, it's kind of, it's kind of like that, like genies and, and I don't know, whatever. Uh, it's cool though. It's cool. Definitely look into it more if you're interested, but yeah, it's really cool. Um, this is one of the new good cards. This card's really, really insane. It's like literally a plus two. Uh, the deck really needed it. It's phenomenal. You also get this guy. This guy's awesome because if you get hand trapped, literally just making this guy, if like all you can do with your turn is make this guy, you have, you have like a spell and trap negate and like a ghost ogre, but like twice as good. Um, and that's that's just off of making one synchro monster. So you get pretty good value there. That's most of your board. You just end on like one or two more things as well, like a monster negate and something else. But that can get the job done for sure, especially if your opponent's already thrown one or two hand traps at you. Two interruptions, four cards left to work with. That can get the job done for sure. 
Next up, number three, Code Talker. So this one's interesting. I, I actually played this deck quite a bit uh, at the beginning of this year. Um, and I always bounce around decks. So it's not like I bounced off of them just because I was like, deck sucks. No, definitely not. The deck has a lot of really good things going for it. It has insane extenders. It has insane win conditions like Ibly locking your opponent while making an extra link. So pretty much you say your opponent can't special summon unless they link, but they're extra linked. So they have nowhere to make a link monster with. So uh, you really, really can just lock them out of the game. It's it's kind of insane. But the deck really has a ton of tools. Um, it's one of those decks, kind of like Dragon Link, kind of like Infernoble a little bit, where it's just kind of like Cybers good stuff. You just play like all the best Cybers extenders you have access to. Um, and the deck just rolls. Once you if you open a good hand, it's like crazy. It's like, what do you even hand trap? Like one of the one of the cards that's like specifically insane is Sinet Codec. This card is insane. It's not a once per turn search, it's a once per attribute search. So sometimes you literally do turns where you search five times off of this card, and it's just insane. You just go search another extender, search another extender, search another extender, and like it, it's really stupid. This card's like, this card's so crazy. I love it. Um, and it's also hard to hand trap. Like, Ogre's the only thing that beats this card because you can't veil it, you can't impermanence it, you can't, um, you can ash it, but the card is just once per attribute, not once per turn. So they ash it and you just get four more searches throughout the course of the turn. Uh, so this card's like a legit problem for a lot of decks to handle because they just like don't have anything that stops it. Um, there so um definitely definitely keep an eye out on this deck um especially because we've been waiting a long time for heat soul we still don't have him yet we don't know when he's coming so i obviously this doesn't push the point on like why you should pick it up now except for the fact that like at some point they're going to import it when they do i think a lot of cybers prices are just going to spike immediately so even just financially maybe better if you always already thought this deck was interesting grab it now because when heat soul drops you just need to worry about getting him and not dealing with the um the explosion of the market just because everybody's super hyped about code talkers all of a sudden um also when it comes out the deck can be played more as like a mid-range control deck but um you don't have to go that route you can still keep it combo but just having him gives you that versatility to be able to go down different routes which is which is really cool to be honest so definitely one of my personal favorites as far as combo decks go and i'm not really the biggest combo player but this one is a really really cool one i think it can compete right now and it only gets better when heat soul comes out like a card that like helps you play through hand traps and plus while you're comboing it's like it's crazy it's really good which takes us to number two Goki. Um, this one's really cool. Um, I know that um, I know that some players have been messing around with this um, as of lately, and this deck's no joke. It, it you set up some pretty crazy boards. You you pretty much play like some some splashable engines. You play like I think the PK engine. You could play the Code Breakers for just like free crazy link material, and of course you play I sold with like the equip package because. There's already good equips in the game that are just like good extenders and then like you combine it with ice old and obviously uh you you're not playing necessarily huge bricks but also being able to take advantage of a card like that is insane this card has the same kind of situation as in for noble knights where like i believe this deck isn't just make a sold half combo i think you have to make a sold with a goki that way you can get a search i think that's what you need but um the deck is like one of those decks if it pops off it's hard to win and the deck can grind that's the other thing too is gokis are like one of those combo decks that actually can grind because they very consistently end with a card in hand uh, or like another goki in hand and as long as they can attempt to make another assault on the next turn they're going to attempt to make a push at you and uh, that can be hard to deal with right like every goki searches it, so it's it's kind of crazy um also another thing to look out for like uh if they ever get a link one or we ever get a generic link one that can just get essentially any level four lower goki into the grave then this deck becomes like extremely frightening that might be the death of a soul if that happens uh straight up so just a heads up on that but they have a crazy spell card like rematch that is like monster reborn for two different gokis um which is insane definitely definitely insane they pretty much just loop this card and use it every single turn usually end with it in hand as well for follow-up crazy 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 
And then of course I sold, like I said, like this card searches you a follow up or discard fodder for stuff like Headbat, I believe. Um, makes Headbat a little bit easier as an extender. Um, or like I said, follow up, just search and follow up, not bad. And um, of course, like <laughs> the value this card generates to combo decks is like insane. So Goki's number two, definitely a deck that if you think they're cool, I, I'd try them out. I think they're legit. They can make towers like monsters. They can make multiple materials, oppos with, with also like multiple fog blades and a bunch of interruptions set up. It's honestly pretty crazy, but you obviously have to take advantage of certain generic things. But, um, you know, that's not, I mean, if you're playing competitive, it is what it is, right? Dragoon and whatnot. Yeah, definitely sees play in this deck for sure. Which takes us to our final deck of the video. I have Sunavalon in here. This is really, really cool. This this deck is getting the new spell card in Burst of Destiny. And let me tell you, this spell card is like insane. Uh, I don't believe it's once per turn. It summons a Sunseed monster straight out of the deck, but if you already control the vanilla, you can summon any of them. So that means you're summoning like the really good extender ones. It's actually kind of crazy. Uh, this deck has like one card combos that get you to like three interruptions plus like multiple follow ups. Really, really good. I'm actually eyeing up this deck because I think nobody's keeping an eye out for it right now. Um, and it sets up like a bounce, a blanket board negate, and um, what else? Uh, it can, and then like, well, okay, so those are like the two like interruptions that like the deck most easily sets up but you, you can also end on different things i believe the deck has like either a one and a half card extra link the deck has potential to summon like if, if you can do your if you didn't have to normal summon lochi and you opened like either unexpected die or sewing itself which or one for one right so there's like seven copies of like that in your deck you could potentially do a combo that gets you to cactus bouncer or you could play like a small arrow mage package and that could give you additional normal summon for cactus bouncer which just says no special summoning and you just beat your opponent's face in when they can't summon um which is kind of crazy so there's 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 legitimate value to this deck this deck's really interesting it also has it's one of those combo decks that it has one card one and a half card combos so uh you can just play actually a decent amount of hand traps and extenders so the deck's good at playing through interruption the deck um is very consistent and you still have can can fit in some defensive cards so you don't just auto lose if you lose a die roll to um like another combo deck pretty much which is really really sweet um yeah and also like keep in mind this deck kind of like goki kind of like infernoble um kind of like code talkers it's kind of like plant good stuff rika is another engine that i think is really really good in this deck it, get, it can get you another free interruption or two uh, depending on the kind of hand you open and also like petals like insane you only really need to play one because once you use it and get it engraved it comes back on your opponent's end phase for literal free and then gets you another search um which is so so good uh you definitely have to keep an eye on that because um that like this package like really gives the deck like a nice little boost and and not even that the deck fully needed it there's a lot of good generic stuff you've got lone fire blossoms and and other plant cards that generically like already make this deck great the arrow mage especially the arrow mage link really gives this deck a ton of value when you're doing your combo you if you look it up you'll see that card's like so good in the deck um but yeah Definitely, definitely keep an eye on that. And then of course we have Bengal Lancer. He's the generic card we got fairly recently. He's really cool. If you haven't picked him up, I would think about it. If you think this deck is cool, he's a secret rare. If, if, if a plant deck gets good, this card will immediately skyrocket in price. And uh, you wanna have him because he's a compulse every turn. And he also revives himself from grave by banishing links that are already in there. Um, which is really easy to set up in the deck. So he's really, really powerful. I love this guy. Um, and the deck's just like really good. Like seriously, I love that it's one one to one and a half card combos and that's really, really awesome because it allows you to play so many free slots in the deck of extenders, of hand traps and other things as well, whatever you like personally in your build. So that's, uh, I think that's gonna do it. Yeah, so Avalon's number five, just retracking through here real quick. We have Goki's number four. We've got, uh, code talkers number three we've got 
Um, we've got Magic Key, number two. And of course, number one, we we started off with our Infernoble Knights. Ask my boy Charles. He knows how good this deck can be. But a lot of really cool options. A lot of decks that are getting support as of uh, re like very soon or hopefully on the horizon. And um, there's honestly other stuff that I could have mentioned here. I thought about putting Speedroids in here. They just got a really nice buff from the, uh, the, the Legendary Duelist and really cool deck i just could only hit fit five slots on here so they were really close but shout out to them shout out to you guys for watching this video thank you so much as always subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one down the line from me and i'll catch you in the next one peace